Hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the fourth part of the What Matters Most series, in which I'm testing all the components on a car to find out which one matters most to a car's one lap pace. In this case, it's a Honda NSX around Laguna Seca on Grand Turismo 4. Last time we saw the effect that nitrous oxide has on the car's pace, and it was a bit odd, but, but along the shore of it was that nitrous, depending on its setting, can really boost your lap time even if it is only a temporary boost. The most effective in the long run was nitrous on the lowest setting where it improved lap time by a surprising amount considering it had seemingly little effect on the car's speed. I then conclude that this was down to the braking distances. I know it's a bit of a weird conclusion but if you want to get the full lowdown then check the last video to understand what I'm going on about. So since I've mentioned the brakes and braking distances in the last two episodes in this series, it felt fitting to finally look into how much of an effect brakes have to the NSX's lap time. So firstly, let's look at the brakes and the differences between them. Firstly, we have the standard brakes which are fitted to the NSX, which again gives no description on, but we know these fairly well from our previous laps and they have done a good job of stopping the car. So on to the new brakes which we can buy from the dealer. They cost 4,700 credits, which isn't too expensive, especially when considering how impressive they sound. The game's description of these bracing brakes reads, This replaces the braking system with large radius brake rotors that provide stable braking power even when braking from high speeds, highly rigid brake calipers, and carbon metallic brake pads that remain strong even under continuous use. The initial braking and fade resistant properties are increased dramatically, providing grip that can last through an endurance race. The brake fluid is replaced with DOT5, whilst the brake hoses are replaced by stainless steel mesh hoses. So that massive description makes the brakes sound like a very good deal, and how they should improve your braking ability and endurance quote unquote dramatically. There is also the brake balance controller which I have neglected to mention and you can buy it from the dealer as well and it will adjust your brake balance but unfortunately the brake balance of my NSX felt fine and there wasn't a major understeer that I needed to combat so I just felt like I'd leave it. It might improve your lap time but I didn't really want to mess around with the beautiful balance of this NSX. So before we take these new racing brakes to Laguna Seca Let's find out how much better than normal brakes they are around the test course. So I'll show you this clip of the standard brakes, braking from as fast as the NSX can realistically go without modifying it, which is 158 miles an hour. So it broke from 158 miles an hour in just less than 200 meters which isn't bad considering they're the standard brakes and obviously I suppose they do have to be fairly good just to be the standard brakes for a supercar hence the short distance that these brakes managed so now onto the racing brakes and this time we're going to be stopping again at the same speed 158 miles an hour around the same track and braking from the same point which is the start finish line of the test course and let's find out how much better the stopping distance for the racing brakes is. Oh. Now that is a surprise to be honest, it stopped at the same distance. I mean, these are racing brakes and they stopped at the same point as the standard brakes. Now how does that even work? And in fact here is a side by side shot of each of the braking points for each brake. And as you can see here, they have stopped at pretty much exactly the same point so <laughs> seems like a waste of money to be honest but before we jump to conclusions we will take the NSX around the track with these racing brakes to see what happens and you never know maybe they work better on the track especially with all the Laguna Seca's sheer elevation changes and well I took the NSX out for one of the most pointless laps I've ever done in my life and that's because these racing brakes felt almost identical to the standard brakes. Although one thing I will say is how these brakes felt like they locked up more, meaning that I struggled only on a couple of occasions, but I struggled to turn into the corner. I mean this was only a minor problem, and I don't really think it affected the pace of the NSX much, but considering that these are racing brakes and they're supposed to improve the speed of your car, 
this slight locking up issue doesn't fill me with confidence for these supposedly racing brakes. Now if you remember that the lap time for the standard car on the standard brakes was a 1 minute 39.7 and now if you look at the same car with the supposedly racing brakes it was only one tenth of a second quicker with a 139.6 so basically these brakes are a complete waste of money because that one tenth could easily have been gained from my driving and not from the brakes performance but I mean just look at this the game claims that this kit gives you larger radius discs and highly rigid brake calipers but to be honest while driving around I didn't feel the benefits of any of these however it does claim that it gives you more stable braking power from high speeds so maybe these brakes give you braking stability and not braking performance but it's also it claims how they don't fade and are ideal for endurance races so maybe that is where they are aimed at at stable non-fade braking like at the end of the Mulsanne straight in a race such as a 24 hour Le Mans race where you don't want the brakes to fade and that does seem to be the case as it says how they brake from high speeds and to be honest maybe my Honda NSX just isn't fast enough or maybe the straights at Laguna Seca just aren't long enough unlike the Mulsanne straight as I said at the Circuit de la Sof. so as I said maybe the NSX just isn't fast enough to feel the benefits of these racing brakes and it's something which I might have to cover in a future video to be honest to go further into detail into how these brakes operate and if they actually are beneficial because these brakes are really confusing but to us, we're going to have to leave it on this sort of mystery for this episode of what matters most because in what matters most we only cover the NSX around Laguna Seca and if I do anything else then it's not part of the series but to be honest if you guys do want me to do this video where we look into the brakes in detail and try and clear up any mysteries on the brakes. If you want to see a video on that, then be sure to let me know in the comments because to be honest, I'm going to have to leave the brakes for now. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the What Matters Most series. Even if what we investigated seems to be pretty uninfluential at the minute. But as I said, I may investigate these brakes further at a later date if you guys want. In the next episode, we will be arguably ruining our NSX by putting a rear spoiler on it to see how effective aero parts are to a car's performance. We know that they are critical in motorsports such as F1, because as you see, when cars lose their front wing, they lose several seconds a lap, and when they lose their rear wing, they've pretty much had it. So, we know it's critical in F1, but how critical or how influential can it be on a road-going NSX? Well, that's what I'm going to be finding out in the next episode. So, I'll see you guys then.